Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Jakari Jackson. It's April 15th, 2014, and let's get straight into the news tonight. Our top story, Ron Paul warns feds could launch a Waco-style assault against Bundy. I guess you can go either two ways. I'm hoping this is very positive of things to come where the people stand up and object to the federal government's intrusion into our lives and everything that we do. And when the people do get together and stand up, I think governments will be forced to back down. But the other thing is, is governments don't give up their power easily, and they may well come back with a lot more force like they did at, at Waco with the Davidians. And of course, Dr. Paul was referring to Cliven Bundy, the Nevada rancher, who's fighting for his property rights, his rights to use public land to graze his cattle. Now, this is a situation where the BLM, the, the feds, the Bureau of Land Management, have come and said, Mr. Bundy, you can't graze your cattle on these lands. And Mr. Bundy told him, hey, you guys can go fly a kite. My family has been on these lands since before the BLM was created. We're going to continue to use these lands. So now it's come to a big standoff situation last week. Our reporters were out there. Uh, they had the feds aiming snipers at people, tasing people multiple times, uh, throwing women to the ground. We'll talk about all that in more detail coming up. And Mr. Bundy says, you know, I'm going to continue to use these lands. So he got into a situation, had a chance to talk to the, uh, talk to the sheriff the local authorities, and they said, okay, Mr. Bundy, you can have your cattle back. They had been holding the gentleman's cattle hostage, and now he can use the lands. But they said it's all just a ploy. The feds back down, but they say it's all just a ploy to come back and raid him later. We've had some uh, high-level assets tell us this informa information that the fans do plan to raid Mr. Bundy at a later date. And I wouldn't be surprised because they just wanted to wait till all the media eyes were off them when they had less of a uh, less of a presence out there so they can just go through and do whatever they want to do. So our thoughts and prayers are with the Bundy family. And as Dr. Paul said, there's nothing wrong with standing up with your rights, but uh, standing up for your rights. But please be as uh, peaceful as possible. You don't want an armed conflict going on out there. So definitely uh, be careful out there at the Bundy Ranch. And we're talking about the, the police brutality going on, tasing people multiple times, the brutality to men, women, and children. And speaking of women, let's talk about this. Texas cop tackles woman for walking on the wrong side of the street. This was a situation a woman was out for her daily walk, was approached by an officer on a motorcycle, and the officer pulls up, starts chatting her up, and she thinks the officer's just hitting on her. <laughs> no, no, thank you, officer. I'll go on about my business. The officer follows her down the street, and then at some point she starts getting nervous. You know, I haven't committed a crime, the woman's thinking to herself. I haven't done anything wrong. Why is this cop following me? So she takes off running. And you often hear these police officers, or even in the video that you can find uh, on the article. He says, you know, if you're not doing anything wrong, you shouldn't take off running from the cops. Well, if you start following somebody down the street when they haven't committed a, a crime, they start getting a little bit nervous. So she takes off running, is tackled by the officer, dragged to the police station, and charged with walking on the wrong side of the street. And people always ask, what's this tyranny you guys talk about? Why, why do you need these weapons to defend yourself? And defending yourself is a... Uh, a last ditch effort you know it's the worst case scenario but why do you need these tools these rights to defend yourself against what you call tyranny arresting somebody for walking on the wrong side of the street when I'm sure this uh, police department may have an internal investigation or two they need to conduct themselves uh, that's tyranny it happened here in the city of Austin arrested a jaywalker because she didn't obey the traffic control advice devices it happened in New York they uh, beat up that elderly gentleman for jaywalking and this is tyranny this in my mind is tyranny this is what you need checks and balances for so these things don't become an everyday deal even though that's happened what three times this year already that we know of uh, pretty much somebody arrested for walking down the street that's tyranny in my opinion and it needs to stop and hopefully we can get some justice for this poor woman uh, the cops just will arrest you for anything these days they need to go arrest the bankers who are devaluing our currency they need to go arrest the ATF for running guns into Mexico this is the stuff they need to be working on go stop the BLM you know, go help Cliven Bundy to get his lands back and his cattle and all that, but they don't want to do that. They just want to beat up on people walking down the streets. FBI will have up to one-third of Americans on biometric database by next year. This by Steve Watson. The Electronic Frontier Foundation notes in a communique that some 52 million Americans could be in the next generation identification biometric database by 2015, regardless of whether they have ever committed a crime or been arrested. And it's no secret that the FBI caches information on you and me. They want people, especially criminals, they want the fingerprints, they want photographs and so forth. But now they're moving towards palm scans, retina scans. And it's not just of people who have been arrested for a crime, convicted of a crime. If you've gone to a job and you have to do some type of identification, some type of security clearance, they get that information too. If you go to a public 
a government building and you have to give your, your thumbprints, DMVs and so forth, they get that information too. And you say, well, what's the big deal about them taking my information? It's a violation of your Fourth Amendment. They have no probable cause to take your information to put it into a criminal database if you have committed no crime. That's exactly what's happening here. And in the same line as this, we have this. Who's watching me? Police took photos of my license plate. It falls in the same line, violation of your Fourth Amendment. If you have not committed a crime, why are they looking at you in the first place? Now, this is by Miss Catherine Watson, no relation to Steve or Paul, as far as I know. As part of my series on the use of automatic license plate readers in Virginia, I wanted to find out what kind of information local police might have. By law, the only information I'm privileged to is my own. In all, police captured 16 photos of my car, mostly at night, and recorded my license plate eight times on five days from October 2013 and as recently as April 1st. And like I said before, this is just the totality of information. They just want to know everything about you all the time, your travel habits, who you're talking to, where you're going, all these things. And it goes beyond just tracking you because now you have these uh, these carbon credits. They want to tax you by a mile, I guess similar to what a taxi cab does. You uh, put in your information and it taxes you by the mile. They want to do this with carbon credits. Meanwhile, the people pressing uh, for these carbon credits and saying that we need all these regulations for carbon change are uh, buying these big houses on the sea. They say the, the ocean's going to overflood. It's going to hit the land masses, but they build these big castles on the sea. They have $30,000 electricity bills. They're flying around in Air Force One in armored vehicles saying Africans shouldn't have air conditioning, but they want to tax you by the mile and not just only that, but put you in these huge police databases. Now, now all this police state stuff we've been talking about, it goes to this. We see them uh, beating up people out in Nevada. We see them taking your biometrics. We see them tracking you when you drive around town. Now we have this Washington State School District sets up homeland security class so they can teach your child how to uh, molest people like the TSA. And a, an employment application posted at the Evergreen Public Schools this weekend requests a certified homeland security instructor to steer young students into a career with the agency. This is the same agency who has, I guess, by our count, about two billion bullets now, many of which they can't use under Geneva Convention, which means they can only use them against American citizens or against paper targets of little children and pregnant women. If you haven't heard about that, you can go look up the no hesitation targets. This is the, these, these, these are things that the Homeland Security, the Department of Homeland Security is doing what they're training for. And also they're buying these mine resistant vehicles. They say they need these things for warrant sweeps. I'm not exactly sure how many uh, drug dealers and so forth they plan to arrest who have a cache of, uh, of landmines, but that's what they say they need it for. And I have this. This is one of my textbooks, one of my college textbooks, Introduction to Homeland Security. And you can see uh, if you join Homeland Security, you can rescue puppy dogs and so forth. But the reason I still have this book is because I was taking uh, some criminal justice classes and this was part of the course and I couldn't sell it back because even the school realized how worthless of a textbook this is. And you can see right here, this is the official timeline for 9-11 and the source is Wikipedia. And uh, if you're like me and you went to school, or you went to college, you went to high school, your teachers told you, please do not use Wikipedia as an official source. You can use it kind of a as a tool, a starting point, you can start on Wikipedia and it'll link you to some other things. But don't use it as an official source, but they use it as the official timeline for 9-11 and this, the introduction to Homeland Security. So uh, this is what your kids are going to get indoctrinated with in the near future. Moving on. Pulitzer Prize winning reporter Shai Hurst, Benghazi is a huge lie scandal, but not for the reasons that you think. A highly classified annex to the report, this is the Senate Intelligence Committee report, not made public, described a secret agreement reached in early 2012 between Obama and Aragon administrations. It pertained to the rat line. By the terms of the agreement, funding came from Turkey as well as Saudi Arabia and Qatar. The CIA, with the support of MI6, was responsible for getting the arms from Gaddafi's arsenal into Syria. But this is the stuff that they don't want to talk about. They just want to focus on Ambassador Stevens. And that was a very serious situation that happened to him and also the other people who were injured along with him. Of course, he died. But he got caught up in the situation, this gun running, and he's caught in the middle of it, ends up dead. Meanwhile, you have Mrs. Clinton talking about what difference does it make how they died? Well, it makes a difference because you're not doing anything. You got the cables for this information and did nothing on it. You sat on it because you were too busy out campaigning, handing out your Hillary 2016 buttons and so forth, and not paying attention to this very real situation that you had information on and chose not to act on. So, yeah, you need to be held accountable for that, Mrs. Clinton. But this is a very meaty, very lengthy article, and I definitely encourage you to go to Infowars.com and get more into it. It's a very good breakdown of the situation. 
and breaking down, society is breaking down, but you can arm yourself. That's the good thing about what's going on in the world today. Store owner shoots, kills suspected burglar. Now, this is a situation. A man broke into a jewelry store armed with a hammer. There's another hammer attack that uh, nobody wants to pay attention to. The FBI says that you're much more likely to be beaten to death with a hammer than killed in a, uh, a mass shooting, but uh, that's neither here nor there. But anyway, the suspect breaks in to a store that had previously been burglarized, but the owner was one step ahead. He recognized the, the trend and was sleeping or was taking a nap in the back, comes out with a shotgun, shoots the guy, and then the part I see is a little iffy, goes outside and shoots at the getaway vehicle. Now, if somebody breaks into your house, you're definitely welcome to defend yourself by whatever means is necessary. But it can get you in hot water depending on your state, your state laws and uh, the, the, I guess the trial that you may have if you go out and shoot at somebody who's not an immediate threat to you. So these are the type of situations you see. Uh, you may shoot at a fleeing vehicle and get charged with some type of reckless endangerment. So be careful if you enter these type of situations. But uh, good job to the owner protecting what was his. And uh, this is what happens if you try to mess with people because they don't want you to hear about these stories, these stories of self-defense. They just want to tell you about the, uh, the situation like in Kansas where the man uh, had the, the hate crime against the Jewish people. And that was a very serious situation. I'm not downplaying that. But they say these are the only type of gun activities that happen. No, you can defend yourself in your property legally, lawfully, and in a very responsible manner. And our final story for this segment, NATO's pet Nazis savagely attack Ukrainian presidential candidate. Now stay tuned because right after this break, Alex Jones is going to be breaking down the latest situation in the Ukraine. So stay tuned for that so you can get the full breakdown about uh, some of the more recent events going on. But first, something I want to tell you about, PrisonPlanet.tv. You can go and get yourself a 15-day free trial. You can get the Alex Jones Show, the nightly news, the special reports, the rants, and so much more at PrisonPlanet.tv. So stay tuned right after this break for more special reports.